Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of weapon mounted lights. What we have here is the Goonbeam V1 and V2. Now I did purchase both of these lights with my own money. Um, Goombean did actually send me out one of their EDC lights, which I'm carrying right now, and I plan to do a video on that in the future, but both of these I did buy out of my own pocket. I wanted to add in one more thing right here. Although I did buy these lights out of my own pocket, I do also have an affiliate link with Goombean. You can find it down in the description of this video. So if you decide to buy any of the Goombean products, I would appreciate it if you use that link. It would go to help out the channel. Now back to the video. Now these both are scout style lights. So they are primarily intended to be used on some sort of a carbine, uh, maybe an AK or AR, something like that. But since they are scout style lights, they can take a wide variety of mounts and they can fit on pretty much any platform if needed. Both of these lights are gonna be identical in every way. They're both gonna come packaged in the box you see here. They're gonna come with the same accessories inside the box. Really the only difference between these two models is going to be the output. The V1 version is going to have 700 lumen and 80,000 candela, whereas the V2 version is going to have 1400 lumen and 55,000 candela. So very impressive numbers on both of these lights. When it comes to candela versus lumen, as a general rule, candela is always king. Candela is going to measure how much light can be thrown at distance in a concentrated spot versus lumen is going to measure the maximum output of the light in any given direction. With that said, let's go ahead and turn the sun off and take a look at the output of both these lights. The first light that we're gonna look at is the V2. So this will be the 1400 lumen and 55,000 candela. All right, so the little berm you see right here is at 10 yards. Second berm there is at 25. Uh, the third berm, and you can also see that VTAC, that is at 50. There's a small white plate there in the center, that is 75. And the gong and all the other targets down there that you see are at 105 yards. Definitely got a lot of output and a lot of candela and lumens going down range. Um, if I take the hot spot completely off camera, you can see where the flood has a nice shoulder line there. Uh, this light does have a decent amount of flood, but with that 55,000 candela, it also has a very respectable hot spot. Um, overall, the V2 version really does give you a good balance of flood and lumens. Kind of the best of both worlds. Um, if you're kind of trying to split hairs between flood, or should I say lumens and candela, this V2 is definitely a good option. Now we'll look at the output of the V1. So right away, you can definitely tell this thing has an extremely tight hotspot with that 700 lumen and then that 80,000 candela. I mean, this thing is just punching out light. It's almost like a lightsaber. Extremely bright, extremely focused. It does have some usable flood. If I put it there on the gong at 105 yards, you can see that it's still lighting up this target over here at 10. Uh, we are in complete darkness down here, so the flood is a little bit exaggerated. Um, in a more usable scenario where you've got a little bit of twilight, the V1 definitely doesn't have a lot of flood. Like I said, it's much more like a laser beam. But if you need to punch a lot of light in one spot, long distance, um, you know, shining through tinted glass or something like that, this V1 will definitely do the job. And now we will compare the V1 versus the V2. So the V2 is going to have a lot more flood. Um, it still has, you know, usable candela. I mean, 55,000 candela is nothing to laugh at. I could easily make shots, you know, all the way to 100 yards. And I can even ID down there. In this kind of scenario, it's total darkness. I can easily distinguish between the targets. I can see the hits on the targets from earlier in the day. Uh, but when I switch to the V1, it just gets a little better. Um, I can just see more detail down there at distance. Now, you definitely lose a little bit of flood. As I move the V1 off screen, you can see that edge versus the V2. It still has that sharp edge, but it just simply has more flood than the V1. So it's really going to be a lot of personal preference, uh, depending on what you're doing. 
you know, if you really want to punch a lot of light at distance, uh, you know, photonic barriers, tinted windows, that kind of thing, you know, the V1 definitely may be the one to go with. In my opinion, if you're looking for something more general purpose, I would recommend the V2. Um, you know, it's kind of giving you that best of both worlds if such a thing does exist. You know, 1400 lumens, you can kind of get that wall of light effect that we all want because it is, you know, a little bit wider of a light, has a lot more spill. But at the same time, 55,000 candelas is no joke. Um, you can still get through tinted glass. I can still see it distance really well. Um, I like both of these lights for different reasons. Uh, but between the two, I do favor the V2 model, more of a jack-of-all-trades option. Now we'll take a look at one more comparison, then we will go ahead and turn the sun back on. So the output you're looking at here is from a Surefire M600 dual fuel. So this is a 1500 lumen light, but it only has 16,000 candela. Now this thing has a ton of flood, uh, even with the hot spot completely off camera, it's still lighting up the whole range but it is definitely lacking in the candela department. Now I can easily see those targets because you know, they're my targets. Also, there's a raccoon walking down range. Hello there. I can easily see those targets. I could quickly tell that that is a raccoon, but when I switch to the V2, I can tell that, you know, he's got three rings on his tail and he's limping on the left foot. There's just considerably more candela compared to something like the Surefire, but I still wanted to compare it just because this is a very common light. A lot of people are familiar with it, but it is very dated at this point. Hopefully you can get an idea from that footage exactly how much output these lights have. Um, I can assure you it is way more impressive when you're actually in person. The camera really does it no justice. So let's head over to the tabletop and take a closer look at these lights and what comes in the box. So both lights will come packaged exactly the same way as you see them here. Inside the box, we're going to have a Goon Beam sticker. We are also going to have a Picatinny mount. Um, this will come installed on your light when you open it up. Um, I did change this out because since these are Scout style lights, you pretty much have an uh, endless array of options when it comes to mounts. We also have your battery charger. Now this light runs on a 18650 battery, which is included, but it is a dual fuel light. So it will also run on CR123s. So there is your charger. That is your cable for your charger. Also have an extra O-ring. We have a standard clicky tail cap. And it will also have a pressure switch in the box, which I have installed on the V1 version right here. There is that aftermarket mount that I'm running. So I'm running a T-Rex Arms light bar. I have a video on this mount that I will link in the description. Um, I really like these, especially if you're running a suppressor, because it really helps to push that light out a little further. But either way, there is that pressure switch. It will also include a couple zip ties. You've got some mounts in here to go with your pressure switch. You can see those right here. Uh, you've got an Allen wrench. You've got a couple of screws. You've also got some double-sided tape, so if you needed to stick that switch somewhere. So you've pretty much got everything you need to run this light right out of the box. So here is a little bit up close look at both of the lights. We have the V1 on the left and the V2 on the right. Um, you can quickly see they are identical in every way except for the output that we already looked at. I'm sure some of you have already noticed that both of these lights are extremely similar to the Streamlight HLX. Uh, matter of fact, they're basically identical as far as on the outside. Uh, they have about the same weight have the same form factor, and from my experience, they've even had the same reliability. Streamlight is a very proven brand, so the fact that these seem to be just as reliable is definitely a good thing. The obvious difference between the Streamlight and the Goom Beam is going to be a huge advantage on the Goom Beam when it comes to output. In conclusion, I believe these to be very solid weapon-mounted lights, especially when you consider the price. Um, I've been recommending the Streamlight HLX for quite a few years now, um, especially to someone that wants a budget yet reliable with decent output. Um, it's still a good light, but I think the Goom Beam really takes that to another level. From the testing I've done, which has been several thousand rounds, the reliability definitely seems to be on par with Streamlight, um, but the output is way more. Uh, the output of these lights is definitely more comparable to something like Cloud Defense or Mod Light 
just to name a few, um, which are considerably more expensive than either of these lights. So if you're budget minded, but looking for something with a whole lot of output, I would highly recommend the Goombeam. So that's about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found the information helpful. Um, if you would like to contact me, my email is down in the description. You can also contact me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you're not following me in those places, I would appreciate that as well. As always, thanks for watching. See y'all next time. Five Alpha.